education. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us again for another On Art Conversations with the Artists. Today, we're excited to be joined by exhibiting artist Catherine Fitchner, um, whose exhibition Veils is on view at the Delaware Contemporary right now through the beginning of January. And Catherine is going to be speaking with curator Chase Doherty about her work at the museum. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Brittany. And thank you, Catherine, for being here with us today. Um, so your work, Veils, is displayed currently in Draper um, for our fall season. And I always like to just kind of start off the conversation to just hear a little bit more about you and your background and your artistic practice. Okay. Uh, well, first, I just want to thank you for doing this. And thank you for including me in the fall 2021 show. Um, I'm really very honored to be um, among all of these accomplished artists. And I also just want to thank the DC staff. Uh, they've been nothing but kind and supportive and professional. So it's been a great experience so far. So, and I assume we'll continue to be. So yes, definitely. <laughs> We're thrilled. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, so yes, my name is Catherine Fickner. Um, I'm currently living in Pittsburgh, um, but I lived, I grew up outside of Philadelphia and lived in Delaware for many years. Um, I came to Pittsburgh to go to graduate school at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, I received my MFA. Um, I then did five years of adjunct teaching. And um, after making almost no money for five years, and I didn't have time to paint anyway, um, I decided to get a, what I would call a regular job for 17 years. Um, four years ago, I finally left that job and went back into my studio to do some work. Uh, the first two years were just really being playful and trying to figure out again what it is I wanted to do. And two years ago, I rediscovered uh, pattern schematics. Um, and I say rediscovered because I had been looking at them years ago, but I just kind of forgot about them. Um, so that was um, a great discovery because it was the perfect armature to hang my ideas and my abstractions on. And uh, so the work in the DC is really reflective of those last two years um, of work. Um, so my primary focus um, is to create dynamic abstract work uh, with a suggested narrative. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, uh, sorry, um, uh, I have to have some sense of a narrative in my work to stay engaged in it. Mm -hmm. um, I also find uh, that the narrative part of it is the most challenging piece to making the painting. Um, so that's very important to me. Um, I've also always been interested in observing people's behavior and um, interested in storytelling. Uh, when I was an undergrad, um, after undergraduate school, I started to do uh, very, um, I would say, tight realism. Uh, I would do still lifes but I was always picking the objects as if I was creating a stage scene. And over time, I realized that it was the narrative that was the most important thing to me um, and not painting realism. So over many years, the, if you wanna call it an armature again, changed from still lifes to abstractions mm -hmm. to hang these narratives on. Um, let's see. And, and the other part is that I think that I've noticed changing is that even how I interpret stories has changed over the years. Like initially I thought these stories were all about me, my, my stories. And then I became aware that these were not just personal stories, they were common to everyone. And now I'm reading things uh, that say, like some contemporary psychologists say that, um, we can never really be sure what is real and what's not real and what our stories are, that, that we create these personal myths. And I find that really interesting, you know? So it's, it's in a way, it's sort of like my, my parents had stories and then I developed 
stories based on their false stories and then people base their stories on me based on false stories and it's <laughs> it's just rather murky yeah. um and i also just read a a book called sapiens by yuval harari and um he said that people thousands of years ago uh, invented stories to hold societies together you know stories about gods and country and money and and all of these things were just made up uh, to keep us socially connected. Um, so I, I just find all of that really interesting. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, and I just interject really quickly too, because yeah. I think that something was so that was so fascinating about the selected work that's in the gallery space is, you know, you talked about having these subconscious narratives, but mm -hmm. I think that, and for those, uh, you know, for those folks who haven't had the opportunity to see the works yet, there's only five pieces in the Draper Gallery, but mm -hmm. each one of them has a very distinctive narrative. And right. I would say that the subject matter was also different. And I think that, that really speaks to what you're talking about is that there's such a variety with these narratives there is no you're not keeping any boundaries on these narratives no no because the um stories are endless and mm -hmm. you know i i'm not really delving into any particular mm -hmm. right storyline um it's right. just whatever um sort of interests me at the moment mm -hmm. you know i keep a, i keep a book of um words phrases um uh, titles from articles, you know, anything that makes me feel like there might be a storyline behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of that inspiration comes from uh, looking at my book of words and lists. And then also my process of painting is to simply start with um, uh, a surface. And a lot of times I'll, I'll have a, a maybe um, a headline or a word or a phrase that I love but when I create the, the, um, the surface, the surface also speaks to me and the surface will take me into another direction. And so I let the painting kind of move me towards the, the subject matter, the narrative, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I love, the, I love the idea of this kind of murky storyline um, since, you know, my real love is abstraction and, I love the paint quality and the design and, you know, those are my real focus. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also like this complexity and imprecision to memory. And that really um, uh, lends itself to distressed paint and abstraction. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's really kind of where I'm coming from. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 that's okay. I, I, was just gonna, talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to go back to the surface because yeah. I wanted you to, you know, I think that um, it's so interesting, you know, talking about uh, these narratives and how they're, you know, visualized and actualized in abstraction and that there is mm -hmm. such a, a deep contrast to that. That's not normally something when you're looking at abstraction, it really yeah. is up for interpretation. Um, right. generally, but I think that having these kinds of narrative basis, um, but what I find so fascinating and dynamic about your work is I feel like you really, the surface of the painting, you know, becomes this kind of mixed media piece with these layerings. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like that is relative to kind of the storytelling that you're trying to get across, but, and I want to hear more about, um, kind of these pattern schematics and telling. Yes. And, you know, there is such an interesting kind of tradition with your family um, mm -hmm. and how that kind of comes across on the surface of the work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so the work at the DC involves uh, fabric patterns, decorations, and transparencies. And I was really interested in pattern schematics since textiles uh, tell a story about us through their patterns and their shapes. They, they reveal ideologies. Um, and so um, 
I just find that, and then, and also, I'm sorry if I'm stumbling here. <laughs> um, th the fact that fabric starts out as a two-dimensional form and then it becomes three-dimensional as it kind of surrounds us. And so all of this layering uh, is, is very connected to storytelling. These, you know, um, you know, hidden agendas and veiled, you know, histories and, and those types of things. So I think that's what I'm trying to do with the paint is to not only mimic fabric, but then symbolize our hidden stories, you know, without being literal. I, you know, that's my, my most important thing is I don't wanna be literal. I don't care if people read the same stories into what I'm saying because it's irrelevant in many ways. It's um, it's it's for them to find their way through mm -hmm. through looking. Um, um, yeah. So so again, um, as you mentioned, you know, my history is my ancestors uh, were uh, from Lancaster County. They ended up there in like 1850s. Um, and they were Pennsylvania Dutch, and my grandparents lived next door to the Amish. And so even as a very young child, I would remember when we got, would go into Lancaster County, you would see the black clothing and the very brightly colored uh, shirts and colors that the Amish would use. And so I think that was my first experience of identifying people through fabric and color. It was just so obviously clear. Um, and then when I would go into their homes, there were always tatting, which is lace. And it was on every surface in the house. And there was always, you know, um, quilting and making their own clothes. And, you know, it was just sort of this history that was, I think, embedded in me um, mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I think that these ideas have been sort of showing up in my work for many years, but I feel like this is the first time I've really had the opportunity and the time to investigate them in any depth. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, I, and I also feel that I'm a little bit at a, a transition with my work. I always tend to work in series and I feel like this might be the end of a particular you know, the show at the DC. And, and I feel like I'm moving into possibly um, more interested in the fabric than the schematics. Um, and I want to be even less concerned with the narrative, but there, ha there still has to be a narrative, <laughs> but it has to be, I want it to be even more subtle and I'm not quite sure where that's going to lead, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're very, very honored that we are <laughs> showcasing the end of a series, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen, but you know. Um, well, and I wanted to, I'm, I'm so happy that you gave us a little bit of background with kind of your ancestral history and mm -hmm. you mentioned the color. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about your color palette because mm -hmm especially after seeing, I mean, one of my favorite parts about being a curator is that you see the images and you don't quite get to see these things in real life. And then when I got to see them, mm -hmm. um, I was so struck by the color palette and that it was so, it felt like each piece was very unique, but they also felt very cohesive as a group. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if that was intentional or where do you kind of get these colors from? Um, um, that's an interesting question. Um, no, there was no uh, forethought on making everything cohesive. Mm -hmm. That was just random. <laughs> and, and, and I actually think, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think some of my coloration, that's one of the things I feel like I want to work on a little bit. But hmm. um, one, one of the things that, and I'm trying to look for an example, and I don't see anything right here. Um, you know, when you make clothing, you use those uh, transparent, it's almost like an onion skin. I don't know if you've ever made, uh -huh. you know, the schematics are, and I love, I love the look of those. And so I want to, moving forward, I think I want to use those a little bit more as my inspiration. Mm -hmm. So the color palette may end up being more similar in each painting. And, um, Trying to think how else to, to talk about that. Uh, 
yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I'm excited. We'll have something to look forward to to kind of take a look yeah. at when you know when you keep moving forward and experimenting. Yeah. yeah. Now, color's not anything I I real um, definitive about. You know, mm -hmm. I just start throwing paint around. Yeah. And I, whatever paint, you know, it's almost like when you're an undergrad and all you have is red paint left. You know, you just start yeah. like throwing what you have <laughs> onto the surface mm -hmm. and then something starts to happen and, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> well, so kind of my last um, question is that, and I guess it's not, it kind of goes back to the narrative piece. Mm -hmm. There was something um, in the conception of this exhibition, we talked about doing the extended labels and that kind of additional interpretation in the gallery space for the viewers, um, which is up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I really loved that you wanted to do that. Um, and I was eager to help you succeed mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. because I, mm -hmm. um, that's something that I'm very passionate about as well, um, especially mm -hmm. when looking at these abstract works. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, do you, I mean, do you think that that was successful? Were you happy that we were able to do that? Is that something that you want to continue? Um, so I think that one reason I wanted to do that was simply for myself because sometimes I have trouble wrapping my head around words and why I do what I do. Um, and, and so I think it was a good um, exercise for me to think a little bit more deeply about each piece. Mm. Um, the comments I got at this show, I got a couple of comments from um, non-artists, like my sister's neighbors, who <laughs> know, you know, I mean, they're great, but they don't know anything about art. And they came up to me and so appreciated the signage. And so that was great, you know, because as you know, during these openings, you can't talk to people because it's just, you know, kind of chaotic and, and, you know, it allowed people to almost be talking to me. If I had been standing there, I might be able to mm -hmm. tell them something. Going forward, I, I think I wouldn't do it, mm. but I don't regret that I did it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to. Yeah, no, I yeah. think that that's, I think that, mm -hmm. I mean, and especially we at the TDC are all about experimentation, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that that was a wonderful experiment to kind of offer people a little mm -hmm. bit of a glimpse into these subconscious narratives, but also these very intentional narratives you're thinking about as you're, right. you know, creating the work. And, um, you know, I mean, we'll just see what yeah. It sounds like you're just on the very brink of experimentation. So <laughs> yeah. keep moving. <laughs> we'll just keep watching you and cheering you on. <laughs> have you have you had any comments about you know, the I, sign? I have or? I have not had any comments. Um I would be curious to to know that as well, but I think mm -hmm. that um you know I'm happy to hear that you have received positive feedback. So that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. 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 That's a great Wonderful. experience. So mm -hmm. Good. Well, we're so, we were so happy to have you and, you know, thank you again for being here and chatting with us today. Um, and we look forward to just yeah. having you in the gallery space for the next four months. So it's going to be great. Oh, that'd, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. We are so excited to be exhibiting Catherine's work at the museum. And if you haven't already, you can come check it out now through the beginning of January. Um, and again, Catherine and Chase, thank you so much for this really dynamic and insightful conversation today. It's always great to hear from the artists and, um, you know, support them. I love hearing about how you're experimenting, Catherine, and I'm glad that we're able to help with that <laughs> and show the work. So I hope everyone will come and check it out. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.